We've all been watching Sweet Magnolias, the new series on Netflix. Uh, I'm finishing watching the first season. And what I can say is that uh, when watching it, uh, I just want to live in serenity. So uh, today we are uh, talking to the showrunner of the series. Uh, Cheryl Anderson is speaking today to us on Show Quiero Verte. Thank you very much, Cheryl, for this interview. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you and I'm honored to be on the show. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, uh, we've all been watching uh, here in Argentina, Sweet Magnolias. Um, we really like the series and um, I wanted to ask you how this idea of turning uh, this novel uh, written by uh, Sherry Woods turned into a TV series. How did uh, this idea become a reality? The um, executive producer of the show, Dan Paulson, does a show called Chesapeake Shores for the Hallmark Channel. And that series is also based on uh, a series of novels by Miss Woods. So he had the rights to the Sweet Magnolias novels also. And Netflix is starting to explore romantic drama uh, a little more fully. He took the Sweet Magnolias books to Netflix and they said, yes, we'd be very interested in this. And then he was looking for a showrunner and his line producer, from, uh, from Chesapeake Shores had been my line producer on a previous show I had done called Ties That Bind. And Matt, the line producer, told Dan, you should talk to Cheryl because I think she'd be a good match for this project. And so I talked to Matt and Dan. I read the books. I talked to Matt and Dan again. Um, I talked to Miss Woods and, uh, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, um, when watching the series, the, the atmosphere that you created um, is really beautiful. Uh, we get to know about the lives of different characters. Um, and um, I wanted to ask you, how, um, how did you choose the cast? Um, how did you create all this atmosphere that transports us to as we can say to, to a different world, but to a world, to a town, to serenity, um, as a place we would all like to live in. <laughs> well, I, I think that was a big part of it. In the writer's room, uh, because, because we wrote all the scripts before we started filming. So as we were writing, we talked a lot about serenity being the kind of place where anyone would feel welcome and anyone would feel that they'd like to, to live there. We certainly all felt like we'd like to live there. Uh, and our sort of motto was, we want everyone to see themselves in serenity. So we wanted to build a community that was inclusive and warm and welcoming and featured the aspects of a neighborhood that, that people respond to. That um, e even though it's a small town, so everybody knows what everybody else is doing, it's also that everybody's willing to help out when necessary and you've got good friends who live two or three houses down. You can just walk down to their porch and sit and talk to them, work things out, that, um, that you're never alone in the best sense, that in good times you have people to celebrate with you, and in hard times you have people to walk alongside you and help you out. And so in combining all of that, that was how we created Serenity. And then we were fortunate enough to find uh, this beautiful town in Georgia that gave us the perfect exteriors with magnolia trees. That was the most important part. <laughs> um, but, but the big houses with the wraparound porches and the 
pretty streets and the small shops and sort of that picture perfect small town. Even though we acknowledge not everything's perfect, there are problems that people have to walk each other through, but still a, a visual that enhances the harmony that we are presenting in the writing. Yes, and there are very strong female characters, right? And Absolutely. Even, yes, and even though they are um, very different from each other, each of them with their own personality, as you were saying, um, these characters complement each other very well. Even though uh, they are different, uh, they are there to support one another and uh, they are there facing problems together and helping each out. That's uh... uh, absolutely, you know, that was the, the thing that uh, I responded to first when I read the books was that this is really a story about the power of female friendship and that these women who've known each other since the cradle. Um, have a lot in common, but they also have unique attributes. And to me, that's one of the really beautiful things about true friends is that you know you can rely on this particular friend because, you know, she she's the one who keeps her head when everybody else gets crazy or this one is the one who's always got the joke that keeps your heart from breaking. Um, and so because the three of them get together at least once a week for Margarita Night to, to share their problems and their concerns and their joys, over time they, they can take comfort in their similarities but also celebrate their differences. That's right. And um, what I really liked about the show as well is that uh, we get to see characters um, of different ages who, who are experiencing and, and living uh, situations according to, to their ages. Um, how, how did you uh, work uh, to show um, each of them and, and the experiences they are living. I mean, for example, some of them uh, as teenagers, other as adults, because what I felt uh, when watching the series is that we can relate to them because uh, each of them is um, really well created and we get to see what each character is living and experiences according to how old they are. Well, thank you very much. We, um, we wanted to design this as a multi-generational show, not just because we thought it made the town more interesting, but in the hopes that we would reach a multi-generational audience and that perhaps generations could watch the show together. Uh, it was very helpful that several of us in the writer's room have teenagers. Uh, and of course, we all still vividly remember the pain and the joy of being teenagers ourselves. But the, there was a wide range of ages in the writer's room. So we were able to use that in terms of personal experience and where we are in our lives now, and also the, the various people we have uh, in, in our own lives. I mean, Paula, Maddie's mom, uh, I think we all poured a little of our own grandmothers into her. Uh, and the, the kids, uh, it, it was just, it was very much us all remembering the, the heartbreak of being teenagers. And then the couple of us who have kids of, of that age, being reminded this this is what it's like for kids that age now so there there was great material already in the books and then we just supplemented that with personal experience and mixed it up with a little imagination but i'm so glad it resonated with you
<laughs> yes, and the actors are really talented. Um, how was the process to, to choose the cast, uh, to choose is each of these actors uh, for these characters? Um, it, it, it was thrilling. Um, I mean, we are so blessed with our cast. I mean, the, the three women are stars in their own right. And the fact that they were interested in doing the show and then that the three of them clicked so beautifully from the first time they worked together. Uh, that first scene, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, you would think they actually know each other and, and they didn't. Um, and with the, uh, the, the same thing with the men, um, I had been fortunate. I have worked with Dion, who plays Eric, uh, before on that same show that I know Matt from. Uh, and so I was delighted to have the chance to work with him again, but I didn't know Justin or Chris Klein or Chris Medlin. Um, so it was just about, um, you know, in, in casting, we weren't just looking for great actors. We were looking for people who carry an essence of emotional truth. And um, we, we cast the, the core adults in Los Angeles, and then um, most of the rest of the cast came from casting in Atlanta. And our teenagers, we met in Atlanta, and mo it's hard to tell because they do such a great job, but most of them hadn't done that much before. But there's just, there's something magical about being in the room and watching an actor audition. And, and I just, I feel it. I get like a lump in my throat sometimes. And I'm like that, it, her, she's, she's the one, she's the one. Uh, and we, we had a wonderful casting director in Los Angeles and a wonderful casting director in Atlanta who helped us find all these great people. And then working with the other executive producer and our producing director, it's like planning a dinner party, right? I think these people are gonna mix really well and we're gonna have a good time together. And that's how we got our incredible cast. I love what you were saying about uh, this magic that happens when we do what we love. Uh, and sharing uh, the talent that each of us has with the world. In this case, uh, in Sweet Magnolias, in this beautiful series. And um, when I was listening to what you were uh, saying about the series and all this um, creativity that all of you have, um, I was wondering um, if you discovered that you had this talent and this passion uh, for writing and um, for um, being in charge of, of a TV series from an early age or if you discover it later? Uh, how did you discover that you love um, working as a showrunner and writing and sharing your talent and your creativity in this way? I actually started writing very young. Um, my parents were both big readers, and so my brother and I read a lot because my parents encouraged it. And when I was really little, I was like, I'm going to write books. And then as we got older, my parents took us to the theater a lot. And I thought, oh, oh, this is exciting. And so I started thinking about being a playwright in high school, and I went to college to study playwriting. But when I, gra when I graduated from college, several of my friends moved here to Los Angeles to work in TV and film, rather than going to New York and working in theater. And one of them said to me, you should come to LA because the weather's better. And I actually came out to visit her 
and got a little taste of what she was doing out here. And I thought, well, this is really an exciting thought that hadn't occurred to me before. I was, you know, out of college at this point and was saving up money either to go to New York or to go to graduate school. And um, I went home and I prayed about it. And I thought, I, I know I have been given these talents as a gift. And now I have to be open to how best I should use these talents as my gift back to God. And uh, I decided Los Angeles was, I, I didn't decide. Um, after much prayerful consideration, God led me to come to Los Angeles. And so I thought actually that I would start off writing movies, uh, but I got a job working at a television production company and just kept falling in love with TV. So I worked and I studied and I wrote and tried to learn more with every script. And finally my scripts were good enough that I got a job on a TV show. And I started in half hour comedy, but realized that I was much more interested in telling longer, more complicated stories so I moved into our television and I've been writing our television for 20 years now and working my way up to the point where uh, I was able to be a showrunner. And this is my second show as a creator and showrunner. Wow. And it's a blessing every day. It's beautiful to, to see how passionate you are about your job uh, because uh, I imagine that um, it must be also um, a lot of work to do. And um, when, when I, I hear, when I listen to you, what I can feel is that you are really committed with it. And um, what would you tell to, uh, for example, uh, a teenager or someone who is starting a career uh, um, similar to yours, who is uh, starting a career in filmmaking or writing or directing, and um, maybe uh, who thinks there are a lot of challenges that are going to come, it's a lot of work to do, maybe it's not always easy. Um, what sort of advice would you give them uh, taking into account all these experiences that you were telling us about? I think the most important uh, piece of starting out is understanding it's going to take some time because you have to refine your craft, you have to build your network of people you have to find your way in and then work your way up. And I think a lot of young artists, well, young writers anyway, get really impatient. And I understand that impatience because part of that impatience comes from the passion you have to share your story. And if you didn't have that passion, you, you know, it, it's, it's good to care, but you can't let your passion overwhelm your patience. You have to understand that you, you need to do the work and you need to find your way up in the system. And every, every script you write should teach you something so that the next script will be better. And if you're constantly working to to be better then you will get better and you also need to uh, read and watch as much as you possibly can and and think critically like here's here's my favorite tv show why is it my favorite what works what doesn't work i don't like this one why 
Um, is it just the subject matter or do you not like the style in which it was written or shot or, um, and look at the, look at the other artists who are doing the same work that, that you're doing and who are their influences. I think it's really important to, to study film and TV, not just from right now, but from the past, even though styles have changed a lot, there's a lot we can learn from the, the masterpieces of previous generations. So I think understanding that it's, genuinely a lifelong process of, of education and always striving to be better next time uh, is, is crucial. Yes, it, it's important to, uh, to keep on learning, right? And exactly. Uh, I, I was thinking, uh, now I remember that on your Instagram account, uh, in your description, um there you say that you have uh other projects that we don't know um <laughs> about yet uh so uh i was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about uh the projects you have i know that um, nowadays uh things are very uncertain but uh do you have uh other projects in mind uh for the near future well i always have something else uh, that I'm working on um, because it actually helps me manage stress because if I get stuck with what I'm doing, then I can uh, take a break and go work on something else. And it sort of helps me um, clear the obstacles from, from the current project. Um, so, I, I just have some other ideas for, for shows. Um, I've got um, one that's historical and one that's supernatural and uh, another one that's a family drama. So I, depending on my mood, I can go, ooh, I feel like talking about ghosts right now or I feel like talking about love. Um, so it, um, like I said, it just, it helps me sort of stay on my game and not get tunnel vision. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and what about Sweet Magnolias? Are we going to, to see another season? Uh, I hope, I hope, I hope, I pray, I pray, I pray. Um, I would love to do another season. Uh, I think the the cast and the crew are anxious to get back to Serenity also. Uh, we just have to, to wait and hear from Netflix whether that's going to happen or not. Yes, we would all really like to, to see a, a season two. <laughs> so, so would uh, we. Yes, we invite all our audience to watch Sweet Magnolias on Netflix uh, and to to... I mean, as I was saying before, to, to be transported to serenity and, and to learn uh, a lot about the, the, the characters and about their life experiences. Uh, because as I said before, uh, at least what happened to me is that I felt identified and that I could relate to the characters and through their experiences. Um, I mean, I also learned a lot about Uh, about myself so uh, uh, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed the, the series so thank you very much for that oh thank you very much and thank you for sharing that that means a lot to me I I always hope that what we do will touch people's hearts so um, so consider yourself a citizen of serenity <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes that's really beautiful that's really beautiful um, Thank you very much for this interview, Cheryl. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you about your vocation, about uh, Sweet Magnolias. And uh, in, in our show, we are a team. And now I'm doing the, the interview uh, because it's in English, but we are, uh, we are a team. Uh, it's four of us. And we really appreciate your time and your generosity and, and this interview for, for our show, for Shokiro Verte. 
Well, I thank um, all four of you and I thank you in particular. And um, it was an honor and a delight to talk to you. Okay, thank you very much. And okay, don't, uh, don't miss uh, watching Sweet Magnolias on Netflix. Um, and thank you very much, Cheryl. Uh, so till next interview, bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye.